Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036 0703 7681198. Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Father, we want you to do that for us. We want you, Lord, to enlarge our hearts. We want you, Lord, to allow our eyes to see divine possibilities. We want you, Lord, to assist us, not to be narrow. We want you, Lord, to do something in us, something in our hearts that will not cut short what you have come to do in our generation. Lord, I beg you that this must remain a movement and never become a monument. Lord, I beg you that this stream with the ever flow, flow into lands and nations where we will not even be able to go by ourselves, that this stream will get there and it will never become a little dam in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, as it flows and it grows, enlarges and deepens. But it overwhelms the earth. Please enlarge our heart. I just beg you tonight, Lord, that you will envision us. Envision us. Envision us. Thank you. In Jesus Christ's name, we are prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you. I'd like us to begin tonight by understanding one more time what is it that God is bringing you into what is it that God is doing in our day what is it that God is working out in our midst and because the more I had prayed about this time this particular time the more I hear God saying, the things that I have told you before, be aware of them. The instructions I have given ahead, the time for their fulfillment have now arrived. But tonight, I would like us to deal with, so where are we? You know, when we were about to finish the, the MLR, if you remember the final charge of the MLR, there is the word now. Do you remember the word now? Eh? Say, and now. And I thought that for a man not to misbehave, and mishandle the move of God, he must be aware of the present, the present space in which we have now arrived. And we cannot be able to understand and have a proper envisioning for what we must do from now on 
if we don't first of all even if it is by a recap understand the now and brothers and sisters you are not here as an onlooker you are here as a stakeholder that God kept you alive and you are now at this point in the will of God for us is because con continuously I'm just persuaded that you have a very critical stake to hold in what God is doing so I want you to please listen to God not that someone who is afar off not that someone who is say let's hear them listen to God as someone whom God kept alive for a time like this You are alive because you have to be alive. There are sisters, brothers, that we cried and prayed together. In those days, when we had meetings, We've been doing visions retreat. This is not a recent arrangement at all. We always gather to envision ourselves as if to peep into the future that God is setting before us. And how many of us gather? Sometimes we are just about five. Sometimes we are six, sometimes we are ten. Sometimes when we are looking for where we can do it, we may just go to one of our parlors, our sitting room, and we are having a visions retreat. And you can imagine how we are going to be praying and praying inside the sitting room. And we are speaking that this vision is going to take over the whole world. Say, what kind of thing is that? And I remember we spoke, and I, you will not forget. We were in one of our brother's house because I was, again, you know, when I do meetings in Goko like this to envision our brethren, to envision what we are doing, I go to Otupo to envision the domas. So we are meeting in one brother's house, brother Ozi Ozi. You remember him? He's going to glory now. You can imagine how big a sitting room is of a three bedroom government quarters. So all of us that were crowded in that room, we were about 11. And I stood up. As the Lord was giving me a vision of what this work is going to become. And we read Numbers. Numbers chapter 22. Where the king of Moab, King Balak, called his people. And he said, there's a problem. All of a sudden, what is the problem? He said, there's a people that they are coming. They are coming from Egypt. Everywhere they went, they leaked. Let's read it. <laughs> you know why? You know, when God is speaking to us, the way he speaks to us, he uses scriptures to bring us visions. When we say we are coming for a visions retreat, right from the beginning, our envisioning is not that somebody just said, mm. Mm. 
I saw a vision. I see a dog. Just moving, 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 moving. No. No. That has never been our vision's retreat at all. The envisioning that God has always given us, He has always located it in the Word of God. And it will bring us scripture. And I see we are just reading scripture. And then it will begin to envision where he is going with us. So we were reading that passage. I want you all to quickly read it. Because I'm just passing through it. Numbers 22. And the children of Israel. Verse 1. Set forward. And pitched. In the plains of Moab, on this side Jordan, by Jericho. And Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was so afraid of the people, because they were many. And Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. And one have said unto the elders of Midian, Now, shall this company do what? Lick up all that are round about us, as the ox licketh up the grass of the field. And Balak, the son of Zippor, was king of the Moabites at that time. That was why he sent messengers to Balaam to come and see whether he can cause the people. See his message. He sent messengers thereof to Balaam, the son of Beor, to Peter, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth and they abide over against me. How many were the children of Israel that they saw that they covered where? <laughs> now, we were in that small room when the Spirit of God said, look, this thing, even though it started in a small room, it is going to cover the whole face of the earth. And that it is going to leak up everything that is contrary to the will of God. It's going to be like a hox that leaks. You know, it, it, it will take up everything until everywhere is clean. So as I was explaining, the vision of what God said he would do which we don't know how it was going to be. How can few five people sit down and be talking of that? One of the brothers who was in the meeting and did not understand. He did not know I was talking of a vision that will happen which we don't know how many years it will take. He was so afraid. So he stood up and went to his pastor. You know, to put them. And to them, I say, Brother Billy said, <laughs> What they are doing will take over all our churches. It will collect all our members. As you see them now, they are planning to take over everything we have. Say, so They will lick us dry. So the pastor said, Hey, is that what they are planning? So they began to fight. I was not, I didn't know why they were fighting. So if you think you are going to take over our churches, we will tell you that you cannot do that. I said, I'm not going to take over your church. We, we know you are planning it. <laughs> uh, hallelujah. 
So we began to believe God. So the meeting that we started inside the room, even at that time, it broke. It broke. Until we cannot sit even in a local church. We have to do tent. And so those people, sometimes they will come. You know, I used to invite them. Mm -hmm. But then when the meeting started, they would just come. To see how many of their members have been captured. <laughs> sometimes they would try to make sure that they clash a meeting with the meeting. So if, we, if you don't come, we will take attendance. If we don't see you, you are finished. But still, it couldn't work. But they were thinking that we, want, we are just going to take over their small things. No. God is talking of something beyond. God is talking of something beyond. We stood up after prayers and said, Lord, in our lifetime, a time is coming when the culture of Edoma will become the culture of Jesus. Do you know it's going to happen now? It's already happening. And it's a small thing yet. Small thing. Because this thing where it is going, you don't know how to stop it. But why are we bringing this? And I want to give you some few critical, critical, important marks for tonight. We won't speak too much in details tonight. It's just to say, Lord, now, what is the now of this move of God? What is the now for my own life? What is the now for the ministry to which you have called me? What is the now for my service? What is the now for my involvement? What is the now? What is the now? Because you've got to work in the now. You must not walk in, your, in the yesterday. Otherwise, the cloud will leave you behind. You must not cling to that which heaven has already declared as past. If you are going to be relevant in what God is talking about. And for each one of you, there is a now for you. And that word now means now. What you did not do before is not the issue for us now. The now of this move is what we are sitting back here to understand and to work with. And Three or four passages are here for me just to set that and then set you to pray. So that when we come tomorrow and we now begin to speak about maximizing where we now are, making the most of where we now are, getting the fullness of where we now are, But let's quickly set to the now of it so that we can go. I have noted several nows. And they are very, very interesting to me as I keep working uh, with God. And as I keep studying the word of God that is coming to us. Now, some of you who have been with us, you will know that Genesis, Genesis particularly chapter 13, had been a very serious turning point 
in our walk with God. I want to draw that. Because of the relevance. Because of what he did to us. When it came. And where it landed us. When it came. Not because we are going back. But because we want to take note that when that now came to us that time. Something happened. Something took place. Such that God is talking about another now. It is clear that something is again going to happen. Hallelujah. Now, in Genesis chapter 13, you will see that the Genesis 13 was a chapter in the life of Abraham which will have been repeated in the life of Isaac if God did not intervene as we studied during the MLR. What was that chapter? There was a famine in the land. There was a difficulty in the land. There was there was Drought in the land of promise. Please, all of you be hearing. During the MLR, God was using Brother Dennis in one of those times to explain the pathway onto Rehoboth. And he began to note that farming is something that whether you like it or not, it comes. It comes to test your commitment. It comes to test your obedience. It comes to test your tenacity to hold the will of God for your life. It comes to prove how serious you will be in holding a divine treasure. It comes to prove what quality of men are you if God were going to entrust to you something that is valuable. Farming comes to prove a man out whether he can exchange his birthright for immediate pleasure, for immediate relief, for immediate solution to a looming problem. Farming is allowed in the life of any man that God wants to use for something serious. For him to sink a never drying well. You don't dig an enduring well when it is raining. Am I right? Nobody will go and dig a well when the rain is on its peak, say in August. September. <clears throat> in Tibland, when do we sink well? It's in March. We dig wells in March at the height of the dry point. So that you can go down, 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 down. You are still digging 50 feet, 60 feet, 80 feet, and you have not touched water. But when you touch water at that time, it means that it will survive all year round. So farming was necessary 
to try out what is in you. Farming is a necessary instrument to reveal how enduring you will be when God releases the anointing. And brothers and sisters, when God began to allow us to go through the farming, farming, hi, but it's not only farming of food. Even though farming of food has made people to migrate. Oh my God, did you hear me? There are people that I sat with here. And I begged them. I said, don't leave, don't leave this land. Go with visitors. They said, mm -mm. I don't want my life to waste away here. I'm going. I said, but the ministry that God gave you, he's about to break for us. Say, yeah. But I believe people don't support people's ministry here. You see, I have an anointing that if I went and preach in Lagos, I preach somewhere, see how people will be running and they will be giving me offering. I will put that same message and sweat it. They don't recognize anointing here. That's what some of my brothers, ministers, that we used to go about preaching, that's what they told me when they were relocating. Farming chase many people out of the center of the will of God for their lives. Did God plan for them to die in famine? No. He only wants to sink an enduring well into their life, into their spirit, such that they can endure any situation. But they could not. They could not. You know, there was a time when even children's school schools that children will go there was a family when you'll be looking for where to put your child to get good education and there was none and it was looking reasonable as if in order not to jeopardize the future of your children move out of this place You are the one God called. God has not called these children. Don't waste their lives. Famine. When myself and my wife wept one night and we are going to drop our first daughter going to school. We are going to drop her in that school. And we look at ourselves. Knowing the kind of school that my wife went. And she was just an A student all around. Well exposed. Laboratories. Technical laboratories. Their school had bakery. Their school had a stadium. Today I went to their secondary school with stadium. Then I knew I came from a bamboo school. <laughs> My God, I said, eh? so this is where you went? Say yes. And you will have thought that if she went to such a school, her daughter should go to something better. Oh my God. We went and dropped our child. And as I was looking at these children, 
They were looking at me. I was looking at them. And the only thing I can say, yes, this is the call of God on my life. This is the call of God. Whatever you, whatever you become, it's okay. God will help us. It was so terrible. One, one day we carry our boy and we went to Otobi to drop that boy in that Otobi. Otobi was one primary school that the federal government said they are going to use to start a federal college. No window net. Nothing. When we got there, nothing. No building. Nothing. I look at the boy. I look at my wife. I look at myself. I say, God, will this boy become anything here? Will he not become a dropout? And if he does, will they not blame me tomorrow? That this call of God that you say you have received, that located you in a bush, can't you be reasonable? Even if you don't want anything, at least for this one. But we couldn't do otherwise. We told God that even farming, farming of facilities, you know, we are used to suffering. But some say, even if you suffer, your child should not suffer. After all, God has not called him. What was God doing? God was testing. Will I be qualified to hold an enduring inheritance? Will there be a sort alternative that I will see and I will quickly grab and let go that which is eternal? Of course we prayed. We returned home. There was one brother Matthew. Remember that's that one brother Matthew, a teacher, whom I called. I said, This boy, Matthew says, Sir, if you can trust him to my hand, I will care for him. I will watch him. So we left. We came back. But you see, the matter was so heavy in my heart that I said, no, we have to change this boy. We have to change this boy. I remember we took time. We went from, we took him from Otobi, isn't it? We tried to go to Makodi. I met one of our old friends, very senior principal. There's a school that they are just, that they are just revamping. What used to be SBS? <laughs> when we went, everything has a village, your son were bringing her. Somehow, somehow, it didn't work out. My boy said, Dad, leave me there. Leave me there. God will help you. I said, hey, God will help you. We tried to go to first, but I mean, Baptist Church, I mean, Baptist the High School Church. He said, you don't take people midstream. The young man says, sir, let me continue. He had continued there. He was SS2 when he wrote his work and made all these papers. Some of you, you don't want to stay where God asks you to stay. And your explanation is because my children will suffer. Some of you, you have refused to remain where God wanted you to be because you are looking for soft landing. You say, even if it's me, it's okay. But no, 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 these children, uh uh, no, 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 no.
Why did God allow farming? Even farming of facilities. Farming of provisions. And then farming of friendships. Farming of friendships. Some of you, you have never suffered a farming of friendship. So you don't know what it means. You don't know when you had no friends. When you thought that this person you are speaking to is your friend. And you open your heart. Eh? And tomorrow, the thing you said to him in confidence because you thought he's a friend, he carries it out. To do what? To stab you. And he will open his eyes. He said, but Bile, didn't you say it? And he said, but that's not the context in which we were talking. He said, but you said it. So you come to a situation where you don't know who to talk to. You come into a prayer meeting, you cannot cry out and say, oh God! Because you are conscious that someone is there who will carry your prayer and misinterpret it. Family of friends. Especially when you are coming from a place where you have precious friends. Where you have relationships. Where you have people that are, they, they, they cherish you all the time. You come to a place where everybody says, go away. Family, family of friendships. Why would God allow a man to go through family? It is not to kill him. It is not to destroy him. It is not to dislodge him. It is to create in him capacity and competence for the future that God is talking about. And any time you survive farming in whichever direction there is going to be an outbreak. Always. Always. And I tell you that we are here today and that God is doing what he says he will do and we are beginning to see it and we are touching it and it's becoming a reality and you are saying, ah! You know why we cannot but say thank you to God. Because God. So when brother Abraham went down to Egypt because of that family. But God took him back. God relocated him back. He came back to the land of promise. And the first thing that I saw, which I normally would tell you brothers, the reason why I encourage you to build your altars. The reason why I want you to always take note of the dealing of God on your life. Put it down in writing. Put it where you will not lose it. It's because we cannot know when a strange wind, a strange famine might shift you and you drift. Woe to that man who drifted from his place of calling and does not have any signposts to return to. If there is nothing God can refer to and say, remember. Remember what you told me before. Remember what I told you before. If there is no points, no reference points for remembrance, Know my posts that you can recall to such a point that if you don't know where you are going again, you should be able to know where you are coming from. This is why we always beg 
that those of you that are planning to last in the purpose of God, those of you that God is going to use for something beyond you, keep a record. Build an altar with your experiences. If possible, write it down. Make a mark of it. You might need it. Do you know what happened when when brother D, uh, Abraham returned from Egypt? It took the miracle of God to to get him out of Egypt. We have talked about that, and we are not talking about that now. That's not the issue. I'm dealing with now where we are now. But when he came back, something happened. The Bible said he returned unto the place of his first altar. He went and repaired the old first altar and called on the name of the Lord who appeared unto him. He retraced where he missed it. He came back to where he left it. And now we need to pray all the time. Lord, take me back. I think it was uh, and the crowd that sang that song. Take me back. Very important. That you missed it is not the big issue. But that you don't know where to return to is a bigger problem. When the prodigal son missed it and he was going, 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 you remember, the Bible said when he came to himself, did you know what happened to him? He remembered. He remembered where he was coming from. He remembered what used to happen in his father's house. He said, ah, ah. Even in my father's house, ordinary servant, they have enough bread to eat and to spare. And I'm here, dying, uselessly, in hunger, struggling with what ordinary pig will eat and they will not even allow me to eat it. I'm going back home. He had a place to return. Don't live a life that has no reference point. Mark every step of your journey. First, it will help you to develop the geography of your journey. It will help you to trace your path in life. It will help you to trace your work with the Savior. And if it is not for that, it will provide a point of remembrance to which God may drag you to return to take your bearing. Thank God. That man had a place to return to. So when he came back and repaired his altar and began to call on the name of the Lord that appeared to him. And the Bible said, when Abraham went up out of Egypt, he and his wife and all he had and lot with him unto the south. Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver, in gold. He went on his journeys from the south even to Bethel unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Ahai, unto the place of the altar which he had made there when? At the first. And there Abraham called on the name of the Lord. And Lot also, which went with him, with Abraham, had flocks, heads, and all of that. And the land was not able to do what? To bear them. That they might dwell in together. For their substance was great. So that they could not dwell together. And there was a strife. 
between the headmen of Abraham, Katu, and the headmen of Lord Katu, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, dwell then in the land. You know this chapter, because it's a very critical chapter in our work. We have studied it over and over and over and over. And I want to tell you that by the grace of God, we are no more in that chapter. We are no more that chapter where you are fighting and struggling and looking for where to do it. Why the Canaanites and the Perizzites are still in the land and you and brothers you are fighting you are struggling for something small let me tell you now when your vision is small when you have no perspective of where you are going you will find yourself struggling with dwarfs You will find yourself fighting over small plots. All of you hear me very well. I'm talking to you because where we are now, you will no longer be fighting for a small space. Stop fighting for small space. And I want to say that to all of you now. What God has done now, He has brought us to Rehoboth. God has done what? Made room for us. Room. Room. What does God has done for us? He has made room. Everybody say room. Aha. God has made room for us. When we are coming this evening, <laughs> the brothers that sat in the car with me, they don't know. They don't know what happens to me sometimes when I'm just driving. Because I'm a man of history. History. There's history in my head. Because I've been coming on a long journey. And I know the battles. And I see them. I say, ah! Can I tell you one of them? Eh? There was a time. Once upon a time. <laughs> yes! Say time, time. <laughs> there was a time. When all that peace house had was a 50 by 100 plot. Which we were renting. And it looked so big. And then you see the trouble. When we finish, our office opens from 8 to 5. Are you understanding? As soon as I close from the office, Harlots. Very, very loose girls. They go and sit in front of my office. Either they are plating their hair with their legs scattered, making eyes to boys. And look at the look at our signboard on top of the roof. Peace house. Hi. Oh God. It used to pain me. When I'm coming, maybe I'm coming from town, and I see them, I would just deliberately drive down my small bit to that time with full light. I just go, mm, then I will, I will do, <laughs> I will do full light to, to 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 expose the foolishness they are doing. I have nothing to do in the office, so I just want to prove that I'm in charge. So <laughs> I just go in. I said, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? I will try to open my office. They look at me and say, man. Very annoying. 
as if I should just sit down and start beating them, dragging them out. I said to her, if I start dragging these people now, they will say, Bragbile is fighting with girls. Huh. Once upon a time, We wanted to expand. No space. We traveled to go and see whether we can buy it. Say if we buy it. If we are, at least if we have bought it and we are not borrowing it. Nobody can do this kind of thing. We go there. The Baba said, Did you not say you are doing mission? He said yes. Mission. Is your work not a mission? We say yes. Say that place is not for mission. That place is not for mission. If you told me you want to do a hairdressing saloon, <laughs> you are doing business, then I can give you. But for mission, there's no mission in that place. Do you remember, sir? We all came back from Jatoka. Deflated. When that battle was serious and we know we can't do anything, we had a meeting. And in that meeting, it is this chapter. This chapter. This chapter. That's why this chapter never leaves. Because a very important chapter. But because you, you have come now, when God has brought us to Rehoboth, you don't have to go and be fighting those old battles. You can have a vision now. God has made room. Even you, you will multiply. Because God has cleared the heaven space. All of you hearing me now. There is an heaven space that has been cleared. God had cleared the space. All you need now is to go and sow in the land. There's a room. All of you, you have room now. I'm telling you, you have more room now than I had then. It was in that when the Lord said to us, stop struggling. Lift up your eyes. You will go away from here. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. God moved our heart out of that place. Because God is saying, you don't have to be struggling with her lots. You know, you used to pay me. I say, hey, God, people are coming from Anambra. I say, 16 Carol, go to Peace House. When they get to Peace House, instead of meeting the man of peace, they meet a lot. Say, how would I explain now? That somebody said, I went to your office and the people I met. I say, oh, God. Ah, oh, God. It was like fight. Go and tell their parents, nobody should come here again. Nobody should come here again. For what? Even when you call their parents and say, excuse me, this thing that these guests are doing here is not good now. I say, well, where do you want them to sit? I have never seen people that you go and report their children to their parents. And instead of their parents to do their eyes like this to their children, they would rather face you and say, huh? Uh-huh. You don't spoil anything. Ah, uh, when you are going, pack your things inside. Leave the space for them. Where do you want them to stay? Don't make life difficult for yourself here. <laughs> but I'm, I rented the place. We paid for it. And so what? It is only when I came here I realized that you bought land. 
you have oranges eh, on your land. Eh? Somebody comes. I see this orange. We planted it. Even though you have bought the land, it's our orange. And they will come in to pluck it right in your eyes. And if you talk, they will shout, oh! And you will be made <laughs> the offender over your own compound. Once upon a time, <laughs> there were battles when there was farming of relationship, farming of friendship, farming of acceptance. All of those farming, the first alternative is move away. Move away. Go away from them. Go somewhere else. As if to push you away from the land of your calling and the land of your inheritance. But all of that was happening not because God was asleep. Not because God had no power. It was because he had not yet made room for us. Praise the Lord. And that thing moved us. It moved us by the grace of God. It moved us to what we thought was a very big space. Where we thought nobody would quarrel us here again. Everything will be all right. And we came here also. And we did everything to do this. And you just need to look behind you there. Whenever there's meeting, MLR is coming. My God. MLR has always been in December. Eh? December. Whenever people know that our December meeting is going to hold, then <laughs> everywhere here, they will be digging yam heaps. They will be making fresh heaps. Not, not, they have not planted before. They are just making heaps. And everywhere there, all the places where you are cooking your canna, there are heaps. Let's see how they will do their meeting and not destroy my heaps. Can you tell brethren not to destroy heaps when people are flowing out? Everybody is looking for where to sit down and do something. So heaps are destroyed. Then when we finish, you can say, we had 100 heaps. You destroyed 70 of them. Money. Hi, oh God. <laughs> we bought some land here more than twice. We will pay. Someone said, mm -hmm. Now, my father, you paid. You have not paid me. If I see anything there, blood will flow here, blood will flow here. Then you'll be saying, ah, ah, What is the meaning of this now? What is the meaning of this? Yes. They were all important because of where God is going. But this evening as I was coming here and we were negotiating and I was talking to the brothers and the sisters in the car. I said, do you see this? <laughs> ah, this peace house. Ah, thank God. They did not know that I was coming from history. They did not know how many places we traveled, we went, this one, to beg, please, let's get this one. We will give you another one. Never. Let's get this one. 
That's our father's burial ground. Let's get this one. No way. We need something to say, no way. Why was God doing that? So that we will not settle. So that we will not think we have reached our burial ground. God allows famine for a man who has a journey to go. A man that ought to travel far in life. When he begins to be too comfortable, too early in life, and God does not want him to develop pot belly over nothing, what does God do now? He must raise battles to uproot him. He must raise issues that will make you unable to settle so that you can get to where you are going. Hallelujah. And when God allows battles, famine, famine of recognition, no matter what you did, nobody recognized it. The good thing you thought you had done that should have, uh, somebody would have come to say thank you. He said, so what? What is it? You want to say, oh God, I am not even appreciated. Why would God allow you to be appreciated by people whose appreciation means nothing? What do you need human appreciation for? When the appreciation actually does not appreciate you. Did you hear what I've said? It doesn't increase you. It only stagnates you and makes you a local champion. When God is moving you into what he wants you to become, it was important. I was wondering. And as God will have it. Because there was nothing. We can't stretch our leg there. We can't take three feet. Mm -mm 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 -mm. We can't stretch there. We can't do anything here. What does that mean? We myopic men. We thought it was big. When God booted us out. When you have to go to a place that God ordained for your life, every intermediary or intermediate settling is a danger. And if God needs to help you, he must create storm, storms, famine, fights, battles, strife, struggles, to push you out. It will look as if it's a loss. Eventually, it's a gain. Will it be a gain? Will it be a gain? It is. Why am I bringing this to you? Now. God has made room for each one of your life. And if there's any lesson to learn from what I'm saying tonight, anywhere you get to have somebody struggling with you over a small plot of land, can I advise you what to do? Leave it. With the well you have dug there. You are not hearing me. You say, but I dug a well there. I've already put a well there. Stand up. Stand up. Release the land. Release the well. Lift up your eyes. 
Lift up your eyes. Where we have come now, if your level above will not be a waste, you must lift up your eyes. The room God is making for you, if you begin to step into it, nobody can struggle with you again. As long as you are where men are struggling with you, you've not got to where you are going. Am I communicating with you? So, may I begin to say to you that in order to maximize this very world, struggle with no man. There's a room for you. Stop looking back. Stop looking at old wells. So say, let me go back. That fellowship we started. That fellowship we started. You want to go for back 10 years? What will you do if you go back? 10 years. Repairing what? Go away from them. Including the worst, you dog. Leave it there. There's something ahead of you. Something more glorious. Something beyond. Something eyes have not seen. Something ears have not heard. Something that has not entered the heart of any man. That God has for you. And I want to charge you tonight. What is the now? It is that we have come to the point. Where God. He's saying, lift up your eyes. So when God said, lift up your eyes, leave that place, go to where I'm sending you, and we have been there. And it will look as if when people struggle with you, are you hearing me? And take away even the way you, da- you, 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 you dog, they will be believing Yes, yes, yes. We will prove to him that he met us here. They will drink their hand like that. Temporarily, it looks as if they are champions. Abi? And then you may be feeling miserable. Yeah, these people have cheated me. These people have cheated me. They are wicked. <laughs> Why we pass down? Why do you weep for narrowness? Why are you weeping for what is not necessary? What will you do with that which human beings can contend with when heaven is set in a room space Space. Space. For you to be what God honestly wants you to become. In this realm of I want your mentality to change. Hallelujah. And every one of you, you need to let the Holy Ghost take away from you anything that causes strife. I want to tell you now, people only strive for what they think and what they see that you are holding. They can only strive for what is visible. Nobody struggles for the invisible. And we know that that which is visible is temporary. But that which is invisible, that which cannot be seen, is eternal. 
May God help us in the name of Jesus. This night before I will leave you to pray with me. Because the now is what I'm just tracing. And I want God to help you see it because that's, that's the point. So when Lot, and you know I don't, I have no business with Lot. Or any of you, you want, you want, you have a lot with Lot? Talk to me, please. Eh? Hi. Please. In case there's any lot around you, are you hearing me? Let him have his lot. What did I say you should let him have? Let him have his lot so that you can have a lot for God. There's a lot ahead of you. There's a lot. A lot. When we use the word a lot, I hope you know the meaning of that. Unlimited, unlimited, uncountable, a lot. Look at, look at a lot that God has opened to me. Look at a lot that God is speaking about us. Look at a lot. A lot that that is difficult to describe. There's a lot. And there's a lot ahead of you. Those who want to fight for their lot, please allow Mr. Lot to do what? To go with his lot. What do I call it? His lot, not a lot. What he's struggling for is not a lot. Brothers, it's not a lot. Just a small thing. And let him have it. And we know that his lot will soon be lost. For he who saves his life shall do what? Shall lose it. Why fight with what will soon be lost? Why waste your life on that which will soon be lost? So, God must have done something to Abraham and said, there's no need for this quarrel. Say, we are brethren. If you go to the east, let me go to the west. There's a lot that is yet to be conquered. The lot that they are fighting over here, which lot is it, please? Just a very small space that the two of them cannot even occupy. You are not hearing me. Stop fighting for something useless. The two of them cannot stay there because it's too small for them. And they are talking about two, two. When God was offering to Abraham. Say, if anybody can number, are we together? God will help you. God will envision you. The first purpose of this vision retreat is for God to envision you. And I want all of you hearing me from all over those of you in the UK, I must never hear you struggling with anybody's lot. There's a lot! A lot that maybe because you are focusing on something, on some person, you are not seeing. Something is, 
if we don't have this now, if we don't have this man now, where are we going to have this? Where are they taking this? Taking what? What is it that anybody has taken? And unfortunately, said, Lord, don't say anything. Even though you are my junior boy, just take first. Anything you want, take. Take your lot. Take your lot. And the young man, the Bible says, he lifted up his eyes. I thought that when somebody lifted up his eyes, he should see a mountain. No, he lifted up his eyes and he saw the plains. So which means that lifting up eye is not like this. It's a lifting up of an arrogant heart. It's an eye. A raised eye. He already saw where water gardens. He saw farmlands. He saw everything that looks already prepared. There are some people that like only conquer territory. They don't know how to go out and hunt. They don't go and win souls. It's only when souls are converted. After we have labored on them, they have become useful. Then he is my own. It's my, it's my member. It's my member. My member. There was time when it was that fight. Fight. Some are still fighting that fight. And I keep wondering, what is it? What is it all about? What is it all about? In those days, we go to schools, we do everything, we win souls, we raise them up, but because we will never be uh, lured to form a church, a Sunday Sunday church, we will not do that. I will take them. <laughs> I remember I took one, one of those converts that was a terrible Indian smoker and God healed him and delivered him, brought him to my house, we were paying school fees and he was growing well and his life was changing and because you know, as a young he was zealous. And I took him and I said, yes. I want you to know how to pray. And this is my brother, my friend. Even when I go to his house, we can pray for four hours, non-stop. I said, I'm bringing this, but I want him to be disciple in prayer. When he has finished praying, he will come home. Abba. Once they saw that it was useful, the first person they preached to him against his brother Billy. Ah, ah. Don't go to him again. Don't go near. Because hey, this, that, 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 that. You know God wants to use you mightily, mightily. Look at my boy, the one that I, I wash blood from his eyes. He come with a raised shoulder. I'll call him by his name. But now they have made him pastor. I want to remind you, I said, you are still my boy. Uh-uh. <laughs> Okay. He was banned from coming to me. There was a fight. There was a time when there was a fight. The fight could be so serious. You say, what is it all about? I said, yeah, don't come again. Just be there. Some will be weeping while they are going. Some will be crying and say, sir, you are the one, you are my father in the Lord. I said, don't problem. No problem. I'm still your father. Go there. Don't come here again. I will be praying for you. It's not a loss. And that is not a lot. Are you understanding? It's not a lot. And they will go like that. 
after several years. When this brother will go up and down here and there, people say, Are you from Boko? And you don't know Black Bile? I know him. You know him and you are not close to him. So one day he ran from where he was. He said, He said, Your signature is rechanting me everywhere. People are asking me, Why am I not close to you? And I was not bold to tell them that you are my father in the Lord because I have abandoned you. I want to go and bring my wife. We have to come back. I said, please go and take permission from them that you like to see me. He said, forget about that, sir. They confuse me. I said, were you confused? He said, where am I? I'm I'm confused. I want to come back home. It's not a lot. What people collect from you when they are striving with you, what do I say? It's not a lot. It's just a, a, they are a lot. It's not a lot. Don't struggle for what is not a lot. Are we together? There was a time it was, ah! Oh my God, it's so painful to me. Some will now return when they are damaged. You remember that my boy that was drunk and was going to urinate in my bedroom. And the word of God arrested him. And he repented. And I said, all right. Come and stay. And he began to live with me. And God began to use him. And once he fell into the hand of our, our brothers, Say, where are you coming from? Because you know why. Can I tell you why? They thought that the message we preach. This message I've been preaching, I've been preaching it so for long ago. This old man, Mr. Flesh. <laughs> I know that you can go nowhere as long as Mr. Flesh is alive. Flesh will finish you. If God will not deliver you from Mr. Flesh and bring you to the new life, Christ's life in you, you are not going far. As you are struggling to do something, your leg will be scattering it. So they always believe that preaching this thing that I've preached for these years is retardation. That nobody should follow this kind of thing and hope to grow. That I'm going to make them poor. That I'm a poverty prophet. That was my second name now. These are prophets of poverty. And that when you come here, you will just be nothing. Nothing will come out of your life. Don't go there. That was the thing. Farming. Of understanding. But that was not important. Where you are going is more important. Can I tell you? Rehoboth is more important than Essek. It's more important than Sidna. Praise the Lord. And so what was the matter? The man lifted up his eyes, he collected his lot. And the Bible noted that he did not know that the people of Sodom and Gomorrah were exceedingly wicked before the Lord and that God was going to destroy them. He did not know. He didn't see red, red letter X. Eh? He didn't see. But once Lot left, God said, lift up now. All of you read now. You will see the now, the first now that I'm raising there. 
Can you see the first now? All of you, please. Please, check. Check. And the Lord said, I'm in Genesis 13, verse 14. I want all of you to go there. You know, I read Old King James, so you will see it there now. And the Lord said unto Abraham, After that Lot was separated from him, did you see the word of God? What did he say? Lift up now thy eyes and look from the place where thou art standing. Look northward. Look southward. Look eastward. Look westward. Let me ask you, what is that? What is that? That is room. That is what? Room. <laughs> room. But did you see that that now is important? Say the Lord said to Abraham, after Lord had left him, after Lord had departed, after Lord has collected his Lord, and he looks as if he has got it. After they have taken the wells, after they have struggled for the water and they have collected it, after they have taken the land, the Lord said, lift up now your eyes. So, what is that now? The present time when God has allowed you to let go all that struggles with you. All that was your essek and your sitna. All that will appear as if you lost it. Oh, that somebody came and sat and collected and he was still bragging. God said, lift up now your eyes. And for you to see the room, all of you please read and describe the room for me. Let's read it and describe the room. Let's read it. And the Lord said unto Abraham, after that Lord was separated from him, lift up now thy eyes and look. Now all of you look. He said, look. You know, I used to be touched with biblical preposition. If he said, look at the place where you are. What would have been that? What the meaning of that? Eh? Look at. You will have been considering the immediate thing that you are seeing here. Look at. Look at this. Look at this. Look at that well that I dug with my money for God's sake. And they are fetching water there. Father! Father! Even though I don't want to curse them, but let that water be bitter in their mouth. How can anybody be drinking a way that I, I dug and they are claiming that it is now their land? Father, 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 I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. Something will chase them out of that place in the name of Jesus. That's a prayer of a, a, a narrow person. So let me ask you, even if God turned the water to bitter in their mouth. How does that change the fact that they have collected it from you? Did you see that you are not doing well? You are not doing well. When God has a lot for you, why do you struggle 
with lots, lots. There will soon be lost. You don't even need to waste one prayer. I don't want you to waste your prayer. Pray something that is of no use. Prayer is a precious thing. Whenever you have opportunity to pray, you are praying to, to, to bring something eternal down. Don't waste your prayer. Did you hear me? It's a waste of prayer. Oh, God, yeah, 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 yeah. All those people that say we not make it fire. What is the meaning of that? And what is the meaning of that? So if fire fell on them, what does that do to you? Talk to me now. What does that do to you? Nothing. Wasted prayer. Wasted fasting. Visionless prayer. What does that do? Let me ask you. My progress is not at the expense of your progress. If I'm only seeing myself as a big man because I cut you short. Am I a big man? What am I? A tyrant. A useless tyrant. Who has capacity to go far but decided to crush a small boy? Are you understanding? If somebody came to steal from me, he saw one bag of uh, beans out of many bags and he picked one to go and eat. And he's a thief. He stole one bag of beans. And I took him to court. And in court, there's a case between Brother Gilea Kani and uh, <laughs> uh, thief. one bag of beans. And you know, Sister Lydia will have to tell you how long it will take for that case to be settled. So, and they will be mentioning your name every week. <laughs> and they say, case is adjourned. Uh, the lawyer was not around. And then you go again. Next time you go again. Next time, and then you have to be keeping a diary of a useless thing. So even if you win the case after five years, what do you do with the bag of beans? <laughs> Useless. Useless. I want to tell you now. Now in your labor, you fight with no one. Waste not a single prayer on anything that does not advance where you are going. There's a lot ahead of you. Northward, southward, westward, eastward, allward. If you don't have eyes to see the room that God has made for you, you might return fighting for one small thing. Stop that. You got me? Stop that. It's nothing. Nothing. Can anybody steal water from the ocean? Eh? Why not? It's the ocean. You can't finish. The more you fetch it, the more the ocean say. Where well done? When you are tired, you know that you will grow to a point where, by the grace of God, what people cut from you will only fill up. It will only become a reason for God to fill you again. You have no problem. You want us to go to that way? God will help us. 
So he did not say, lift up your eyes and look at the place. He didn't say, look at the place. He didn't say, look on the place. If you look on the place, that means that's your hope. That means this is what you are looking on. These are the things you are looking on. These are the people you are looking on. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Look from. So when he used the word, look from the place where you are standing. What's the meaning of that now? Take away your eyes from here. Look from there. As if this place is already finished, as far as I'm concerned. We are going somewhere. I'm going higher, yes, I am. I'm going higher someday. Hallelujah, oh, I'm going higher, yes, I am. Going with Jesus to stay. I'm going above the shadow. Into the presence of God. Hallelujah. Into the presence of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going higher right now. Say, look from. So you see, when we came to Rehoboth, he said, now the Lord has made room for us. We shall be fruitful in the land. Then the Bible said, and he moved from there. And he went to Bathsheba. It's because there's room. You have come to a place where nobody can struggle with you. You are going to where nobody struggles with you again. I don't need to tell you stories. I think I've told enough for tonight so that you can pray with me. Now, what is that now? The now when you have dispensed with useless struggles, quarrels, fighting for something small. The now when your eyes is beginning to see the bigger picture. The bigger picture of what God is setting for you. Joseph, when his brothers sold him out, it was bad enough. Was it not bad? Eh? When he landed in the house of Potiphar, and Potiphar suddenly let him into everything and he became the manager, business manager of Potiphar's enterprise. Limited. Is that not a good place? Eh? To the extent that this boy that was a slave is now the commander. His cheek became robust. He became handsome. And he was moving everywhere. And because he was bought, there was no hope of retirement. Are we together? Because he was bought, he was not employed. He was a permanent slave. Which means the only thing that would take him out of the house of Potiphar was what? death but look at him he was going fat he was doing well doing well some of us you are doing well <laughs> but you are a slave eh? a slave that is doing well mm. and in order to make him permanent to make him a permanent household pet. Madame Pot was looking for him. Do you know that if he began to service that madame, 
That will be the end. First, God will have forgotten him there. Am I right? His covenant with God will have scattered. It will be eaten. It will become very fat. Are you understanding? And you will be servicing old madam. Are you getting me? And, and he will never have a child. That woman was so jealous. You will not allow him to get married. How can you get married when you are already married? You are already married to a married woman. <laughs> he has married to a married woman. And he would have just been, but food he will eat. And then I know what will have happened. He will have become a very, very corrosive rival to his ogre. Hmm? And I know what will happen. Whenever Potiphar says something in the bedroom and the wife does not like and she wanted to prove that don't think you are important. You are not the only man here. She will walk out. Eh? Dig you like that. Say, Joe Jack! Just for her husband to boil, he will come and give her, give him a kiss. Say, sweetie, fine boy. Then she will come back into the bedroom and say, eh? Old man, what are you talking about? Who are you that you are talking to people like us? You better uh, respect yourself. Before your God send you for another errand, just, I'm just managing you here. All the time you are not around, somebody services me here. And because now the bank account is in the hand of uh, Joseph. They will swing to money. All the things that Joseph did not learn from his father's house. She will teach him. Am I right? He will have bought one plot somewhere to build his own. God knew that. The danger that is coming to this man of God, we need something to uproot him. Blackmail! Terrible, terrible lie framed against him to the extent that there was no way he could escape. Exhibit is in the hand of the woman. He is standing there naked. Nobody is in the house to say, uh, he cried. Mm -mm. As soon as the ogre came, no, not, nobody could hear him listening. They just bond him straight into the prison. Prison without, without trial. How long will he be in jail? Forever. But it was God that needed to take him from the place of temporary convenience. So that I can arrive at where heaven planned for him. Look at the room that God gave Joseph. Excuse me. Do you know the room? He said, the whole of this nation is in your hand. The only place where I will be higher than you is in the matter of the, of the kingdom. But I am number one, you are number two. All senators must listen to you. All business must pass through you. Nobody can do anything in Egypt unless you authorize it. The second presidential jet is your own. Potiphar! Chief protocol! The man said, yes sir! Here is this man that we have decided 
to honor. And he is in charge of everything in Egypt. All of you must listen to him. Now, I want you to dress him, put him in the second presidential jet, provide protocol services for him, and drive him around the whole town, and the whole city announce, this is the man, this is the man, this is the man. Potiphar. Very, very confused that day. But who, who is he to talk now? Do you know that when you are in uniform service, when you are in uniform service, are you hearing me? The uniform men, they understand me very well. Even if it is your son that they made commander, it doesn't matter how old you are. What did you do? You salute him. And if the young man knows what he's doing, he will not call you dad. <laughs> dad is not in the matter here. Because that would be an insult of the office he represents. When they say, Sergeant! Sergeant Sam, fall in line! That is his father. <laughs> When they get home and there's no uniform, he said, Dad, how are you? <laughs> the Bible said, Well, when you gave command, I, my body was paining me, but I couldn't look back. Say, Yes. Yes, you better don't look back. That's all. God has made a room for us. The room that God has made for us is beyond the contention of men. I want you to rise up for it. I want you to rise up for it. Everywhere God has booted you out, it is to take you to your room. Stop weeping for the lot that you lost. It is not a lot. Tell somebody, say, what you lost is not a lot. It's not a lot. Stop crying. Stand up, stand up. Let's go, let's go. It's not a lot. Excuse me. What did I say? It is not a lot. All the land you lost, there's nothing there. All those that struggled and took uh, 100 by 200 plot from us. It's not a lot. Actually, if they didn't steal from us, we would have been tied down. Have you? We would have been saying, we have something there. We have something there. What is something there? Our life would have been so narrow. Oh God. It took us. And it's taking us. I want you to know that God is taking us. He has taken us home. Now you go to nations. You are going to nations. And what God is giving them is overwhelming. What God is releasing to them in nations is overwhelming. And I told one of our brothers the other day in Liberia, I said, that land they are quarreling over, leave it, leave it. There was one report to me that there are more hectares that heaven is released. Lift up your eyes. Look northward. Look southward. Look eastward. Look westward. Now, can we now define it? That's the definition we are ending with tonight. And that will be where to pray. That's where your prayer will start. And wherever you are, I want you to pray. Look at the Bible. Look at how they put it. It said, for all the land, all the land which thou seest, to you will I give it. 
unto thy seed. And I will make your seed as the dust of the earth. So that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also wait. Was God speaking to a man? Eh? What is his name? Abraham who? Abraham Terah. So what of if that man was Bile Akane? Eh? Eh? It doesn't matter. The same thing. Same thing. When I started reading the Bible and I started discovering that God spoke to men who also have surname like me. It was as ah, how will you be speaking to one man, Abraham Terah? And you are saying if anybody can number the dust of the earth, so will they number his seed, the children? What do you mean? You talk to one man. Yes? God came and spoke to Peter. He said, you are Peter. I'll give you the keys of the kingdom. Uh-huh. He spoke to a man like that. God spoke to David. So I'm entering the covenant with you. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. So I found that all the stories in the Bible, they were stories about human beings that God dealt with. Am I right? And I'm, ask, I'm asking a question now. I'm asking a question now. If God spoke to William Kane like that, is it is it is it incredible? Eh? Abba, why are you thinking like that? Why is your mind so small and say, well, we are reading the Bible. We are not we're talking about somebody. We are not talking about me. Ah, about who will God be talking? Or, or, or you think God has started talking to trees nowadays? Eh? Answer me now. Or you think God is not just talking to birds? Is that what he's doing? Who is he talking to? He's talking to me. He's talking to me. He's talking to me. The day that God first told us this, we were in GSS. Sam Dogo, you remember the small hall. And we were not up to anything there. When I go to that hall, and I say, ah, was this the hall where we thought we were doing MLR? Our first MLR was in that GSS hall. And we were no fool. Ah, that's a big hall. That's a big hall. I go to that hall now. Can you take 300? Abba. Hey! Brothers. Sisters. All the land that your eye can see. So that's why you are going to pray. Lord, God is saying now, I'm not setting a limit to you. What will be your limit? Your eyes. What your eyes can see. That's what determines where you are going. And I don't want you to be sitting in this minute and say, ah, they are not talking to me. We are talking to you. We are talking to you. We are talking to you. If God is the one who sent you to do business for him, why is your own business the kind that you only push on wheelbarrow and everything finishes and you have been doing that for 10 years? What do you mean by that? Say, these people, this is which people? Eh? In your very eyes, somebody is building a three-story building from the same business. You are still pushing your wheelbarrow. What do you mean? And when they say, they say, where is Jesus? Is Jesus? Ah. Why do you bring such insult to my master like that? Tonight. Lift up your eyes from the place where you are. Look northward, eastward, southward, westward. How do you maximize Rehoboth? When you now know that now the Lord has made room for us. 
The Lord has made room for us. And I want you to lift up your eyes. Don't look at where you are now. Don't look on what you are doing presently as if that is your destiny. Stop looking on that. Excuse me. Stop looking on those people. They don't have your destiny in their pocket. Stop looking at those brothers. I see them talking, bragging as if, as if, as if they have the A to Z of your life in their pocket. Look away from them. Tell yourself and say, and my life is not in their pocket. I'm looking beyond here. I'm going higher. Because Jesus has come to declare irrevocable. Are you a student? Stop sitting. And some of you may have a, a, a lecturer who is like a sadist. And he's telling you that, where are you going? Eh? What, are you, what are you hoping to do? We have been here. If I pass you, that's when you pass. Let me tell you, when a man says like that, bypassing. What I tell you to do? Bypassing, bypassing. And you know, it is possible to bypass him now. You know why? All that he is talking about, he downloaded it from the internet. Go to the internet. You will see everything he is doing. Download it. Bypass it. Bypass it. By the time he set his exam, there's nothing he will set. Because himself is not progressing. He's not thinking. He's not doing anything else. He has become a sadist. Who is sitting like this? You know anybody you see who is sitting like this? Is he making progress? He's not moving. You know why? He's afraid that if he stands up, somebody will take his seat. So his daughter just... <laughs> it's not going anywhere. I don't fear such men. They're going nowhere. He's sitting in one space. He's afraid to stand up by passing. And he said, if you don't pass my course, tell him, excuse me, sir, your course is only a course. It's not the course. It's not the course. Once you begin to understand the purpose of God for your life now, you will soon see that a door is opening to you. And when that door opens, they are the ones that will be begging you. They will say, oh, you know why they will be begging you? Because what you will be doing, the research you will be doing, they will want you to put their name there so that they can have relevance. He will be calling you and say, uh, yes, in fact, that, that project, ah, that's wonderful, that's wonderful. Uh, uh, you, but you have to put my name uh, as one of the co-authors. He said, eh, but, but you are not a co-author here. Anyway, because you are my teacher, I will just add your name. When you add his name, he will be so indebted to you because he knows that he didn't even know what you did. Can I have students that will bypass them? I've not seen students say, yes, sir, I've caught it now. I'm going beyond them. When you start going beyond your teachers, because the promise is that it makes me wiser than who? Than my teachers. When we have time, I'll be talking to you about that. Because at Rehoboth, you are moving. You are moving. You move up. We get to your Beersheba. The place of divine appearance. Heaven will appear to you. So, what is the dimension in which you can engage and maximize your Rehoboth? As far as your eyes can see. That's why we are praying. 
Let my eyes not be myopic. God will give you eyes. You will see opportunities. You will see souls to be saved. You will see places to step into. You will see, you will see grants to cover. You will see empty room to fill. You will see places that people thought nothing can come out from. And as you step there, heaven will bless you there. You will see, ah, you will see abandoned cities and you will reset to it. People say, it is only when this man started coming here that things have changed. Yes. You have an anointing now to reset to abandoned cities. To rebuild broken walls. To bring back what people thought was dead to cause it to revive. Because the spirit of revival has come upon us. I'm telling you, you will see it now. Our brothers in Belize, they said, after MLR, the Anglican communion of their country, they sent for them, come and help us to start this discipleship in our denomination. So they are going to cathedral. The indigenous people. Why not? And I said, that's just the beginning. You will see more than that. You are the one thinking small. Mm. If anybody is struggling with you, over 20 people, why will you die fighting for 20 when there are 2,000 waiting for you? What do I want you to do? Lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes! You won't have gone here and there before you will discover that people are waiting for you. You will soon see people that say, ah, thank you for coming. Will you come again? I will gather up my house. And before you know it, another class is opening. Souls are being saved. Men are being healed. Things are changing. And they are saying, ah, this boy that we rejected, see, he has become something there. May God answer your prayer. Because I will never come back to this chapter. I wanted to read it and finish. Because the next chapter that we are going to come, we are going to now be defining the scope, the dimension of our Rehoboth. Nobody must make this Rehoboth only to do something small. This room must not be made a small room. It will not have been called a room if it is not a room. Are you understanding? You don't use that God has made room for us. When they say God has made room for us, the meaning of that is that God has created for us an unlimited expanse of space where we can stretch we can look like this. We can throw our light like this. We can everything, and we will still not have covered it. May God take you away from narrowness. The end of that chapter, the Bible said. So Abraham, the Bible said, God said, "Arise, walk, walk how the length and the breadth." And my understanding is that. Stop walking as someone. I understand. I used to trek a lot. And when we were going to school, because we trek not less than five miles to reach school every morning. I was a day student throughout my life. My first boarding house was the university. I didn't know what it means to be in a boarding house. But we will wake up and trek five miles. And you are not going down here. You are climbing. And if you are late, Papa is there with a rod. There's one Baba they call Papa. He was employed not for anything else, but for discipline. <laughs> he was this disciplinary master. He had a rod. If he gives you three for the whole week, 
<laughs> you are wicked. <laughs> we feared him. So, who are you to go late? Because power, power will be there. So, we are climbing. We are moving. We are running. So, I learned how to stretch my leg. How to stride. Long stride. Because you know where you are going. Walk with the sense of your long journey. Is that alright? Walk in the length in the breath you must be a man of dimension for the home of God is looking for men of dimension men who are saying oh God thank you for 200 what of the 2000 thank you Lord for this 2000 what of the 200,000 Thank you, Lord, for 200,000. What of the 20 million that are yet to hear? How can we sit down here? What of those 20 million that are yet to be told? What of those people, all of the, all of the Ukum area? Lord, what of all of them? How do we celebrate that we have one discipleship class in Zakibian? Excuse me. Is Zakibian equal to Ukum? Brother Emmanuel. Eh? Zakibian, is it Uku? No! Oh. Zakibian is just one, one, one town out of so many towns. So you are going to bring a map. You are going to say, okay, we are not in Zakibian. We have not got to say we have not got to this. We are yet to enter here. We need to get to Chito. We need to get to that. Oh my God. We have not reached this. Ah. And you are telling yourself. As long as we do not have a disciple. In that village. We cannot rest. That's how you are going to move now. Are you going to move now? Can I ask you to stand up. And tell you to walk. Walk in the length, in the breadth, in the height, in the depth of what your eyes can see. But as we are rising, there was something that happened to Abraham. The Bible said, and he built an altar to the Lord who appeared to him. He knew that this matter is the Lord that has appeared to him. He had no problem to quarrel with brother Lot. In fact, when Lot entered into his own Lot problem, you remember that Lot entered into a lot of problem. He was the one who went from his house to go and rescue Lot. He was saying, please take some. He said, no, 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 I don't take anything from your Lot. So that you will not say you made Abraham rich. God has planned my, 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 my prosperity. Your own will be a contamination. Please, have it, have it, go with it. You are going to pray and say, Lord, all the famines were arranged to move me to my Rehoboth. Now, you are making room for my life. Let's first agree with God and say, Lord, tonight, this life you have allowed me to touch, it will not be lost from my hand. That's your first prayer. Can you pray and say, Lord, I'm connecting my life to you now. I'm putting my life in your hand tonight. I'm laying my hand in your hand. And I say, wherever God has allowed you to sit down and follow this meeting, whether you are following it as a center or you are listening to it in your room or God has called you aside and said this vision I'm envisioning your life. Will you release every struggle tonight? What are you fighting with? Can you let it go? Don't let Satan preoccupy you with nothing. With useless things. I want you to take a decision tonight. 
anything that any man can struggle with you over it is over it's over and so father for everyone that has come and you are declaring Rehoboth I also announce it to you it's your Rehoboth it's your room to grow your room to manifest your room to break forth narrowness is uprooted from your life now strife will no longer be your story what the canker worms and palmer worms ate, God is restoring to you in double fold. The lot that the Lord took, I say to you, is not a lot. It's not a lot. And it will never be a lot. For you, it's just a small thing to clear space for the bigger thing. So whatever you lost, you recover it in hundredfold. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will set you in motion from tonight. He will release you with a fresh velocity. And you are going to move into the fullness of his divine calling. Your destiny is being reset from tonight. So will it be. It shall be well with your soul. In the name of Jesus. And from nation to nation, Lord, we will fill the rooms. We will hear great news of what you are doing. Lands that you are opening up. Harvest that you are drawing in. So will it be. Among the students, among the youth, among women, among even pastors, traditional denominations, this room, oh God, for us to be fruitful, we shall be fruitful. I declare to you, you shall be fruitful. In Jesus' name we have prayed.